this prediction that's right up here. Uh, or just yell at Larry Brooks like every other New York Ranger. Ah, Alright, so I had a lot of conversations this week about uh, whether when what happens when the Rangers get Jack Eichel. And the only reason why I still say they don't need Jack Eichel, if they get him, different story. And again, I'll be probably right in line to text my friends, ah, we just got Jack Eichel. But you need to strengthen the bottom six. The Rangers have been talking about this. Um, everybody, every single fan, um, anyone you can name that there was that was talking about, they need to strengthen the bottom six. And the Barclay Goudreau acquisition, though he's going to be paid, he's going to get paid. And by the way, he would have gotten that on the open market. Mike, I never got to address that comment with you before. Um, he, I think he would have gotten more money on the open market in more term. Um, but the Rangers addressing the bottom six finally to say, no, we're going to match up against other teams. We're going to make it difficult for them to play against us. Um, that is what is so critical because we get into this fantasy hockey mindset of we need player X that does this player X that, that gets this many goals, this many assists. And then you start, I mean, even NHL 21, they kind of have that mentality where you're just going, oh, hey, uh, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna collect all the amount of players that I can, and then the next thing you know, you have, the, like, your third line center is Mark Shifley. No, it doesn't work like that. That's not the way teams work. It's not the way life works. So it's just, as far as I go with that, you gotta build a team. Always, you have to build a team, and if the Rangers can get. Hopefully this week we hear the last of the Jack Eichel trade drama. And if the Rangers get him, then they have to start thinking about how they want to build their lines. Do you want Artemi Panarin on the same line as Jack Eichel? Do you want Mika Zibanejad with Panarin? Do you want um, uh, Lafreniere in different places? You want to spread them out. You want to put all three on different lines. Imagine what that would be like. Even though I just said Mark Shifley uh, being your third line center. Yeah, it's just... It's it's rough, but this is where you have to construct the team, because look at the way 2014 and 2015 that Ranger team was tough to play against, and they went to the Stanley Cup Finals, they won the President's Trophy, and they were a tough team to play against. Look at that fourth line: Derek Dorsett, uh, Dominic Moore, and Brian Boyle. You had two guys that could win faceoffs. You had another guy that would punish people physically, and what happened? That line scored the goal that sent them to the Stanley Cup Finals. What more can you say? you got to build a team. It's not just how many goals we could put in the net. It's also building a team that keeps the puck out of the net. So um, it's just, to Phil, Phil, to me, it's that simple where it's not just acquire the most amount of talent you possibly can. It's you got to build a team, and right now Seattle's doing that literally right now as we speak. Yeah, um, definitely a uh, sorry, <laughs> a little bit of a sneeze there, but um, he uh doesn't have anything from uh, a foreign land right now, guys. Uh, okay. But um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, kind of ties into what I was saying before, uh, what I was going to say for mine. It's a little different, but I I would, if anything, you're right about this because this team was a lot of skill. Thank you, sir. Um, but um, this team was a lot of skill this year. It was a lot of skill, a lot of an experience, and you, you can't win with that. And, and that's why this team partially, partially why they missed the playoffs. So, I mean, Barkley Goudreau is a step in the right direction. Um, like we said in the bar talk, you're going to need more than just that to, to 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 fill out your bottom six and to get the type of guys that you want. But it's a step in the right direction. You can't you can't build with a fantasy team. And how long have we been saying to not follow the Toronto Maple Leafs? I mean, for, for the last how many months now? Six months? Yeah, six months. So, you, you can't follow Toronto. Uh, but you, you, you got to build a team you, uh, that has depth and balance on all four lines. The teams that have four lines that can play are usually the teams that win. Look at Tampa Bay. That team had four lines that can play. So, um, but yeah, 
I I agree with that completely. Uh, I, you, you can't you can't just stack an all star team together. If you want to go further back for proof, look at the New York Rangers from 1998 to 2004. They tried to stack all the talent that they could, all the past prime superstars, and, and hope that it just came together. Didn't address the defense. Didn't address the bottom six. You would Tim have Taylor. Uh, what's that? Tim Taylor. It's one of the ones that was like the, the addressing of the bottom six they got. Was the, the guy that they needed though. They needed more of those types of guys. Instead, they had Jeff Toms playing minutes for them. You remember that guy? Yeah. Jernander. Dale Purinton, Jim Cummins. Like, you, you couldn't have the, Igor Ulanov. Like, you couldn't have these guys playing big minutes that were, were borderline NHL players because you wanted to you wanted to forget about how to build a bottom six or how to actually build up a defense. Mike Richter was not great after 1997, but the defenses in front of him were just god-awful. So, yeah. uh, and... Uh, extending further from what you said, never mind just the 97 team. What about the 2003 Rangers? You ever look at that team on paper? That that team should not be nearly as bad. But one of the most frustrated guys, and Matthew Barnaby can tell you, is sit, it was when he was sitting next to Bobby Holik, and he said, I am not in the right role. I'm, I'm better if uh, I can't be the power by quarterback that they want me to be or yeah. – I mean, I got to remember the exact quote because I've heard Barnaby say it so much, but I kind of nauseated and missed no, him. Talking about, I, I've heard it before. Matt Barnaby was playing with Eric Lindros. He should have never been playing that high up on the line. Yeah. You know? So, but yeah, you're right. It, it's it can't be a fantasy mentality. Can't be an all star mentality, which you can't do anymore because of the cap. But you, you got to be practical with who you add and where you add. Them. I mean, the 2000, I think it was, I'll go, I'll go with the 2000 New York Rangers. Maybe the 2001 New York Rangers. One of them that you can actually compare to the 1992 New York Mets, the worst team money could buy. And, yeah, Chris, by the way, Barnaby was, he's great on TV. And he also, by the way, was great, was good in Buffalo. Although he's, uh, he's just a guy that they, they kept on moving all the time. He would always be going to a different team. Uh, the thing I was going to point out with him, Matt Barnaby, one of his best moments, the Mother's Day hat trick versus the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah. Uh, that was amazing. It's one of the two best Mother's – three best Mother's Day moments I could ever think of in sports. Number two being Dallas Braden and – come on, Marty St. Louis. St. Louis. Marty St. Louis. That's um, but, yeah, you got you to gotta build a team, and that's what I'm going to ask you guys. Um, what do you think what the Rangers should be doing? Should they be going big game hunting? Or should they be trying to work on their bottom six, trying to get guys that are going to be better penalty killers, be tougher to play against? Or should they be getting some more size? I mean, it's sort of like, actually, before I completely sign off and tell you guys like, share, subscribe, put it in the comments, um, which I'll be saying again, uh, it's sort of like how much I want Nils Lundqvist on this team, how much I want possibly Morgan Barron and maybe even Carl Henderson on this team, although uh, stat boy Steven, great enough to tell us it's probably not going to happen this year with Hendrickson. But um, as much as I want those guys, or even uh, Zach Jones or Tom Reunanen, the problem coming up with those guys is then you're saying to yourself, you have one rookie in your lineup, two rookies in your lineup, three rookies in your lineup. You start getting to three, you start getting a little bit nervous, and that's where I was with the Rangers last year. And, oh, God, I would take I, – I would hopefully get that. If the Rangers somehow – I want to be clear. If the Rangers get Yanni Gorn, um, I, I'm going to put up a video of me dancing in jig. Uh, it's not going to happen and because uh, I just don't see it there. And, of course, what better – by the way, what better way to celebrate any anything – with a comment from Anthony LaRocco <laughs> instead of him being here. John? You're, uh, you're, you, you can't. Gord for Butch Navich couldn't even happen because of the fact that Tampa Bay is looking to move salary. If they were to take back somebody like Pablo Butch Navich, who's going to command close to what uh, <laughs> Shelton Benjamin. <laughs> 
Oh man, gotta love Shelton Benjamin, man. Um, but they couldn't take back Pablo Butchnev. But he's gonna command close to what Yanni Gord is making, maybe even more. They, they can't do that. Tampa can't do that. They need to get rid of Salo. So no, that that's that's not gonna happen. And I wouldn't do that if I'm the Rangers. There's no way I'd do that. Yanni Gord would be a great acquisition, but not for Pablo Butchnevich. If you could move um, on, then let's talk. And and again, uh, I still think Butchnevich is getting flipped this season. That's just okay. what I think. Um, and I also think that uh, Lafreniere is moving up towards the top line, and Kreider is the one that's moving down. Yep. And immediately, I think that improves the the, the bottom six right away. Yep. And if you can get a guy that's can at least move the puck. And I mean, I think Kaka probably stays on the line with Kreider if that happens. And he, he, he'll he handle the puck more than Kreider will. Kreider doesn't play with the puck. It's part of the problem. No, if you're right. It's more of the, you know, when they dump it down low and he has to go in and get the puck and then win the board battles, that's his type of guy. Being he, then he moves it to somebody else. Somebody else really kind of drives the possession on that line. That's that's Ben Butch Navich. That's yes. why that line has been as well as they have. Because Butchnevich has been great in that role and, and distributing the puck. And but, and, and and again, once more, uh, I'm going to do this. We'll sign off. We'll start our Q- oh well. Phil will do his yeah, editorial, and then we'll do uh, some Q and A. But just because I say flipping Butchnevich does not mean I like the guy. It just it's a, it's the reality of the salary cap world. It's just how it is. So, uh, what do you think about the way the Rangers should co- construct this team? Can you really construct the team like a fantasy lineup? I'll sign. I'll settle that. No, you can't. But if I'm wrong, put in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. So, uh, and by the way, we're growing because of you guys. We have over 400 subscribers right now, and I can't thank you enough. There's still 25 of you watching us at this moment. Can't say can't say how much of a gratifying thing that is i can't wait till that's it got a zero behind it um even though i've also seen a lot of dislikes mostly on my editorials so it's <laughs> it's just the way yeah the, the first thing they do is they they dislike me did you like the video of course you did so why not check out some more of our content you can check the playlist right here or right here your ideas are intriguing to me and i wish to subscribe to your newsletter